Hello everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I'm going to be telling you everything that you need to know about The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. So I have received quite a few questions about this series over the two years that I've been reading it. It is a 16 book plus novella epic fantasy series that is broken up into five smaller series, four of which are trilogies and one that has four books. So all of the books are interconnected. They do all follow on chronologically from each other. There is actually an overarching plot to the realm of the Erdlings that is outside the breakdowns of the individual series or like the two types of series that we have in this universe that I don't typically go into when I'm reviewing the books on my channel because it's more of something that is pieced together Together, bit by bit over the course of the entire 17 books and you don't really know when you're going into each individual series up until I'd say like the third trilogy you don't really know what the threads are going to be that are going to tie them together but the actual overarching plot of the realm of the Eldlings, without giving any spoilers so it is going to be super vague is that there is a prophet in every generation who is tasked with setting the world on the right path so they can see all of the possible futures and they know which one is the right path for the world to be on and every prophet has a catalyst who is the person that stands out from the rest the person who makes the impossible possible and has the ability to change things that are set in stone so the prophet can see all of the possibilities. They can also see which ones are more and less likely. So the plot of the realm of the Eldlings essentially is that we have a prophet who is trying to put the world on a very unlikely path. So they need the right catalyst or catalysts to be able to shift the world onto that path, but it is the unlikely path. So there are a lot of problems encountered along the way, because it's not going to be easy if you're trying to put the world on the unlikely path. Unfortunately, I can't really give you any more specifics than that, because I truly want you to go into this and like kind of experience it for yourself. But if you ask me like what the actual point of the 17 books of the Realm of the Eldlings is, that is what it is we're trying to change the course of the future. So the Realm of the Eldlings can really be split into two different types of book. Three of the trilogies are following essentially the protagonist of the Realm of the Eldlings which is Fit Chivalry Farsia who is the bastard son of a prince. We follow his life from the age of like four six years old all the way up until he is around the age of 62 like he's in his early 60s and we are following his perspective it's first person perspective for the first first third and fifth trilogy in this series with a little bit of a shift in perspective in the last trilogy but predominantly this is all about Fitz. We're following him from the very young age of four as he's dropped off on the doorstep of the keep by his maternal grandfather who kind of reveals that the prince has a bastard as he wants Fitz to go back to his father as he doesn't want to raise him anymore. So Fitz is taken to the seat of the crown which is bookkeep and when Fitz's father Prince Chivalry finds out that Fitz is on his way to him he actually abdicates the throne in shame and moves to the countryside with his wife. So this leaves Fitz in a very awkward position and remember like we are following the books from his perspective so he has a very like limited narrow view of what's going on especially in these early books as he is quite a young child but nobody really knows what to do with him so he is predominantly raised by the stable master Burridge up until he reaches I think it's around the age of like 12 and the king starts to take an interest in him and puts him forward to be trained as the royal assassin as Fitz is in the this very unique position where he is nobility because he's a prince he's the son of a prince but he is a bastard so he's also one of the common people and that allows him to tread this line in the shadows like in between the nobility and the common people. That is the focus of Fitz's story especially when we're starting very early on. It is mainly about his training to be an assassin. It is about the politics of the six duchies which is where all of the Fitz books are set pretty much. There is some travel in some of them but we're mainly focusing on the six duchies and the farsias which is Fitz's family. So it's about the politics of the court and the scheming and the machinations of the individual members of the royal family. We're getting this, like I said, all from Fitz's perspective. And the thing about Fitz is that he has a very narrow perspective in that he 
as we all are, is mainly focused on the things that are right in front of him that affect his life. So there are bigger things going on outside of him, especially like I said, when we have the perspective of him as a child, but he isn't really focusing on any of that because he's more interested in the things going on around him. So there's much larger things going on in the world that Fitz has very little interest in. And so you don't really read about it from his perspective. So that is where the other two series come into it. I feel like I should be holding some of these books up. So we have the Live Ship Traders that starts with Ship of Magic and we have the Rainwild Chronicles which starts with Dragon Keeper. Now this is the second trilogy in the realm of the Erdlings as a whole and don't worry I am going to go through the full like reading order a little bit later on. And then we have Dragon Keeper's the first book in the Rainwild Chronicles which is the fourth series in the universe and it is also the only series that is more than three books. It is a four book series. So these ones are formatted a little bit differently they are multi-perspective and they are set in a different part of the world which is Bingtown and the Rainwilds. So I'll talk a little bit less about this one because the events of this one could not happen without anything that happens in any of the books that come before it essentially but they predominantly because it's the same kind of area of the world it predominantly follows on from the live ship traders. So this is actually one of my favourite series in the realm of the Erdlings and I will go through like my personal favorites as well a little bit later but this one is multi-perspective and it focuses a lot on small town politics we are predominantly following the Vestrit family who are the owners of a live ship now live ships are big trading vessels that are made out of a substance called wizardwood and when three generations of a family die on the decks of a ship the ship quickens and comes to life so the entire ship is alive but you mainly see it through the figurehead which comes to life and is kind of like a person but made out of wood like you can see figurehead here on um the ship is Vivacia, which is the Vestrit family live ship. So Althea has pretty much grown up on the decks of their live ship Vivacia and the ship is set to quicken when Althea's father dies. So she does have an older sister and her older sister is married with children. Althea has spent all of her time on the ship with her father and so when her father dies she fully expects to inherit the ship. However when Ephraim Vestrit does die he actually changes his mind at the last minute and he wills the ship to Althea's brother-in-law, her sister's husband Kyle, who is truly truly just an awful person. And one thing that I think Robin Hobb is really good at is creating truly disgusting, hateable characters. So Althea is obviously not happy with this. Kyle wants Althea as far away from the ship as possible. So a big plot line throughout this series is Althea trying to get back her ship. We also have a main character called Brashen who has worked on Ephraim Vestrit's ship for pretty much his entire life, but him and Kyle don't get on. He ends up cast off the ship and trying to like find his way when like Althea, we very much thought that his future Future was on this ship. We also follow the rest of the Vestrits that are predominantly in the town of Bingtown and the small town politics and views that they have there. They have something called a traders council and they have the council politics. There's also very different views in this part of the world as opposed to the six duchies. So in here we see a lot of like how people view women and how that has evolved over the years within this community. And in the Rainwild Chronicles we focus a lot on disability and how that is viewed. And then as well as the Vestrit family in this one we also have the perspective perspective of a pirate called Kennet who is trying to be the first king of the pirate isles which is something that has never been done before it's something that people don't want but he is determined and he thinks that he needs a live ship for this to become a reality however it is very difficult for live ships to be captured because the benefit of them the reason why people want them is that they have impervious hulls but they can also like navigate the fastest currents and are just they just perform better than any other ship because as well as the crew the ship itself has consciousness and can guide their crew so those are are the two very different kind of vibes you're going to get from the Fitz books versus, versus like the Bingtown Rainwild books but these two kind of work together in conjunction so I would say that like the main narrative of the realm of the Erdlings is Fitz and what Fitz is doing and what's happening in this area of the world but these books explain the magic of the world and how everything kind of came to be because as I mentioned that's something that Fitz just isn't focused on and isn't interested in because he's more focused on the politics of what's going on around him and the hardships that he has to suffer. The Realm of the Erdlings is very emotionally taxing. They're not happy books to read and they are also extremely slow paced. So if you are not ready for reading, especially with the Fitz books, two to 300 pages 
at the beginning of every book of just like very slow character growth like the final book in the Farsia trilogy Assassin's Quest the first like half of this is pretty much fits being sad and walking so if that is not something that you are able to get behind if you don't like slow paced books if you don't like books that are very very character driven then I really don't think that Robin Hobb is for you you could probably just read The Live Ship Traders as a trilogy and that is about it if you are not a fan of slow paced books because when I say they are slow I mean that they are incredibly slow and it is very much swings and roundabouts as well because yes there's 300 pages 400 pages of walking at the beginning of this book was it incredibly tedious to read absolutely but would the end of this book be even half as impactful if you didn't have those 300 pages of walking no so you need them for the payoff but that doesn't make them any more enjoyable when you're reading them if that makes sense so what you're going to get with Hob essentially is a very epic plot line that is very character driven we have a lot of representation of focus on mental health throughout this series as well in very subtle ways Fitz's life is truly tragic and there are lots of terrible things that happen to him along the way that are going to really tug at your heartstrings and something that I really appreciate with Robin Hobb and her character work is that you constantly see this like at the very end of the very last book in the realm of the Erdlings Fitz still was saying things that very much relates back to the trauma that he experienced in like the second book in this trilogy and you can see how his personality and the way that he views himself and the way that he views his relationships with other people has very much been molded by what happened to him in his early years and the way that he was treated by people around him which I think is truly masterful. Like I've mentioned when I was talking about the live ship traders you have characters in every single trilogy I believe except for maybe the second Fitz trilogy. Oh no in in every single series in the realm of the Eldlings there is one character that like you are truly truly going to despise. I think the worst of them, I won't tell you like who they are with any context or what series they're in but I think Kyle, Regal and Hest are truly the worst of the worst but she really gives you a villain that you truly truly detest and cannot get behind at all. These are truly like deplorable unredeemable characters and when you think that they truly can't get any worse they just sink lower and alongside that she also delivers characters that you really really don't like at the beginning of a series they are the most irritating spoiled terrible entitled human beings and over time they evolve into characters that you really really love and characters that you kind of like respect and get behind and it's just so much more impactful seeing them grow and you can see every step of the way like you can see why they were the way that they were and how they've like kind of got themselves out of that and evolved throughout the course of a series so you're going to get excellent character work in here there are also content warnings throughout the entire thing for sexual assault there is a little bit of domestic abuse in some of them general torture and abuse and if you don't like your heroes in pain this may not be a series for you because there is a lot of pain throughout here especially when we come to poor fits and also there's a lot of animal abuse because there are two types of magic in this world. I will just give you the basic of those magic so we have talked about the live ships which is a different kind of facet of the magic but when we're talking about the fits books we have the skill and the wit and the skill is the hereditary magic of the farseer line. It essentially allows you to get into people's heads and when it comes to your enemies that can be like making them believe that they're terrified or something really horrible is happening to them when it's not and when it comes to your allies it can mean just like communicating over vast distances but then we also have the wit which is a magic that is very much frowned upon and there is actually a novella in the series as well which is additional reading called the willful princess and the piebald prince which really goes into the history of the wit and why people treat people with the wit the way that they do this is essentially the ability to communicate with animals so people who are witted are very much um seen in a bad light it's a bad dirty magic to have but all it does is allows you to communicate and bond with animals so because there is so much of a focus with animals or with like one half of the magic you do have quite a lot of animals throughout here and like that there is sad animal stuff throughout there are also some like quite graphic hunting scenes like there is 40 pages in one of the live ship books that is essentially um set on an island skinning animals for the blubber and stuff that they provide it's, it's a real weird chapter of the book but just so you know there are also like things like that in here as well i do get a lot of questions about the reading order of robin hobb which has always confused me because in my mind there is only one there are some people who will argue and say that you don't 
don't need to read some of the books you can just read like the fits books and be fine and we'll get into like why I don't agree after we've gone through the reading order but in my mind there is only one reading order and that is to read all of the book so if you want to go ahead and skip some of them or splice things together that's on you but I personally feel like you need to read all of them and there is only one order to read them in which quite simply is publication order which is why I always get like quite confused about why I get so many questions because if you google like Robin Hobb reading order there is essentially just one. So the first trilogy we have is the Farsia trilogy. This is the first Fitz trilogy and it follows him from the age of like around four years old up until around like 1820. But the first book is Assassin's Apprentice. We then have Royal Assassin and the final book is Assassin's Quest. Now all of the books in the realm of the Eldlings are quite thick as well. There are just a couple that are like more manageable but you are going to be reading a lot of like 600 to 900 page books if you want to get into the realm of the Eldlings. Next up we have the live ship book starting off with the ship of magic. The second book is the mud ship and I believe the longest book in the entire series is the final book in the live ship traders which is ship of destiny. You then have some short stories and a novella that you can read if you would like to. I wouldn't say that they're compulsory but there are three short stories in the inheritance which is six stories in total. The three stories in here I don't believe actually influence the narrative of the realm of the eldlings at all so you don't actually have to read them in chronological order. You can read them wherever you like but the first one is Cat's Meat that is set before the Farsia trilogy. You then have The Inheritance which takes place before the Live Ship Traders and then you also have Homecoming which is once again a Live Ship Traders prequel but it takes place in the Rainwilds as opposed to Bingtown where most of like the Live Ship Traders is based. The novella I would say once again not compulsory reading but I would recommend that you read it at this point before you go into the Second Fitz trilogy and that is The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince and it is like a cautionary tale slash fairy tale that is present actually in the realm of the Eldlings that they do reference quite frequently in the Tawny Man trilogy. So this was published after most of the books in the realm of the Eldlings I think. Um, so like I said you don't have to read it especially not here but it is referenced a lot in the first book in the Tawny Man trilogy so if you want a little bit more information on what they're actually talking about I would recommend reading this after the live ship traders. We then go into the Tawny Man trilogy. This one is following Fitz in his is early to mid 30s. The first book is Fool's Errand which is one of the saddest books in the realm of the Erdlings and also one of the only books to ever make me sob. We then have The Golden Fool and then we finish off with Fool's Fate. The structure of this trilogy is actually quite interesting because it's almost like a standalone kind of catch up on what's happened to these characters while the live ship traders was taking place followed by a kind of duology that has like a quest structure to it. The next series we have is the Rainwild Chronicles which once again is in the Bingtown Rainwild area of the world. I can't really tell you too much about this if you don't want to know like the full evolution of the realm of the Erdlings but it does focus on dragons. There are dragons present within the realm of the Erdlings. There isn't when the series starts but that's something that's kind of ongoing throughout the entire 16 book series. So this one is, as you can tell with the titles of the books, there are dragons in these ones, including the perspective of a dragon. But with the but the first one is Dragon Keeper. The second is Dragon Haven. The third one is City of Dragons. And the final one is Blood of Dragons. Now I personally, a lot of people really, really like this series, but this is personally my least favorite series in the realm of the Erdlings. This one has a lot of focus on the politics between very small groups of people people like when you're trapped in a location where you only have like 15 people around you it is about that kind of dynamic and also we have a lot of perspectives of young characters in here. Somebody told me like quite a few people said to me before I read the series that it is young adult and it's like the young adult series in the realm of the Erdlings. I would completely disagree. We have major themes of domestic abuse, homophobia and like gaslighting in here in a very subtle way that I don't think would like hit well with a young adult audience and I believe that it has that reputation because some of the character perspectives are quite young but it's not young adult at all so don't expect that because I it kind of like ruined the vibe for me. <laughs> I wasn't looking forward to these because I thought they were young adult but I just don't really like any of the characters in this series but what I will say is that this series is integral for the evolution of the magic 
in the world. And also you may have noticed, I haven't actually told you throughout this video what an elderling is. It's the run with the elderlings. There is a reason for that, but you find out a lot of information about elderlings in this series in the lineup. And then the final series is the Fitz and the Fool trilogy. The Fool is another central character to the realm of the elderlings that is present throughout like the entire thing along with Fitz. Essentially they're, they're just, they have a beautiful, unique relationship. And this is, I have to see, this is called the Fitz and the Fool trilogy and I understand why that it is, but one of my criticisms of this is that I wanted more of the Fool. I didn't feel like I got enough Fool in this trilogy, but this is one of the Fitz series. So it is in that first person perspective, but there is also the introduction of a secondary perspective in this final trilogy. And this one is a homage to the entire realm of the Eldling. So we have this one, which is kind of catching up with Fitz in this area of his life. Um, the first book is Fool's Assassin. There's like a lot of progression, like time passing throughout the beginning of this. So it starts when he's like 48, I believe, but then very quickly he ages up to 60 and that's when the trilogy takes place in his like early 60s. So this one is kind of like a catch up and set up for the trilogy. This one, the second one, Fool's Quest to me is an homage to the Farsia trilogy. And the final book, Assassin's Fate, is is it, it just when you're going through the realm of the eldlings you don't quite realize how well thought out this entire thing is and how it does actually have an overarching plot and how every single element comes together in this book so it is like a conclusion of 16 books which is why this is why i don't think that you can just read the fitz books because so much will be lost on you when you get to this final book if you haven't read the live ship traders and the rain wild chronicles i just this book was just so good this is my favorite book in the entire realm of the earthlings and while you could get by without reading the live ship traders and the rain wild chronicles i just feel like it would be ruining how much of a masterpiece this book truly is if you haven't also read those in between series then answering the question do i have to read all of them i have seen other reading artists some people like i know people who've just read the rain wild chronicles on their own which honestly blows my mind i've seen people who don't want to read the live ship traders and the rain wild chronicles so just want to read the fitz books i've seen people who think the fitz books are too slow and just want to do the, the books that focus on dragons i personally don't think that you can do any of those i think if you didn't want to read the whole 16 book series you have two options you can read the farsia trilogy and stop there and not read any more Fitz books. Or you can read the live ship traders and just read this as a trilogy. I think that this one with it being the first trilogy can stand on its own as a series, but if you enjoy it, I don't see why you wouldn't carry on. And this one can very much be read as a self-contained trilogy, but I don't think you can read past any of these individually because I feel like the every trilogy builds on the knowledge of the series before and just reading like one of the later Fitz trilogies without reading the Farsia trilogy is wild to me. And I actually, when I get that question or when people ask the question like do I have to read all of the books I don't ever know why you wouldn't want to like on if you are unsure about the author like by all means start with the Farsia trilogy if you don't feel the need to continue then don't continue but I don't understand why anybody would ever want to go into a 16 book universe but like straight off the bat without starting it be like well I actually only want to read nine of the books that follow Fitz I don't want to read the ones in between like to me if you're going into an extended universe like this knowing that all of the books lead on from each other they're all set in the same place and they all actually do directly affect each other I don't know why you would ever want to go in only reading half of the books anyway. The reason why I definitely don't think that you can do any other reading order except for the like publishing order of these, reading them all in order, is because they do affect each other. So the Fitz books obviously are all following the same character. So things that happen later on to him do reference things that have happened earlier in different series. Like I said, the second book in the final trilogy is pretty much an homage and a goodbye to the Farsia trilogy. So without having read the Farsia trilogy, I imagine that a lot of the importance and a lot of the fine details of that book will be lost on you. And similarly with the last book, if you haven't read the books that go in between the Fitz books, there's just so much included in that one book that would be lost on you. And I feel like if you did want to read the Fitz books, you could get by. And if you did want to read like the live ship traders without reading the Farsia trilogy, you could get by. And it wouldn't necessarily be unenjoyable to you, but there would be 
so much that's just going over your head that you don't even know that you're missing so much enjoyment that you don't even know that you're missing out on because you've decided to skip some of the books so yeah I would definitely say that you can't read them out of order and you can't just break them down into their original series past the first two so I think that is all that you guys really need to know about the realm of the Eldlings. but just to talk about some of my favorites of the series some of the high points for me like I said um the Rainwall Chronicles is definitely my least favorite series in the entire 16 books. I think my favorite series would actually be the Fits and the Fool trilogy, followed very, very closely by the Live Ship Traders. And I am obviously very attached to Fitz because we see him so often throughout all of these books. But with the Live Ship Traders, this entire thing, this entire universe is epic fantasy. But what I found with the live ship traders is that it's a little bit faster paced so it's a little bit easier to get into and it has a very well self-contained epic fantasy adventure plot you have everything you need in this series and you have great villains a self-contained like adventure kind of plot plenty of action there is a romance in here there's great morality and everything that i personally love in a series you get just in the live ship trader so that would definitely be my second and then equally as good or like slightly under that is the farcia trilogy and then the tawny man personally for me it was not structured very very well and I didn't understand the point in the first book like there's a plot in Fool's Errand that kind of goes nowhere and it sets I feel like it sets up this trilogy to be something that it's not because like I mentioned when I went through the series like the next two books are kind of like a duology with a separate plot to this so it kind of set up a plot that was going nowhere if that makes sense so I don't think that the structure was the best in this so I would definitely say that like the dip in the realm of the Eldlings is towards the middle of the series with the third and fourth series being the worst and then if we're talking about my favorite books like my top three favorite books out of the 17 i'd say assassin's fate comes in at number one ship of magic is number two ship of destiny was also great but there's just one thing that happened in that that i truly truly hate arguably like i think one that's a common favorite among people is royal assassin which is the second book in the farcio trilogy because this has as well as it really set in the tone for Fitz's life and the rest of like the series. It also has a lot of nostalgia for me because something that I also think Robin Hobb does very well is that she makes you feel the same nostalgia for Fitz's childhood that he feels. So when I think about this series, this trilogy, I'm nostalgic and Fitz is also nostalgic for a lot of elements of his childhood, like bookkeep and the kind of people that were around at that time. So I feel like I've covered everything that I possibly can cover. I mean, I haven't. I could go into so much more about things that I love. I could break down the individual books and things that I liked and disliked about them. And I could do so much more without spoilers on this series. Series. but I think as an introduction like if you guys are looking to read Robin Hobb read the realm with the Adlings I feel like this is everything you need to know it's already going to be a longer video than a lot of people may click on if they're just madly interested in a series but I hope that I have given you if you are wanting to read the realm with the Adlings I hope that I've given you the information that you wanted and um, if you want to pop any questions down in the description box I will answer them to the best of my ability if there's anything that I haven't covered in this video I hope that it was cohesive enough I hope you have all the information you need. I hope you decide to pick up the realm of the Adlings because honestly it's I think Robin Hobb is tied with Sarah J Maas for the author that I've now read the most of but she is one of my favorite authors. This is one of my favorite series of all time so I do hope that something that I've said encourages you to pick up this series. Do note though if you don't like because I've had people in my comments like does this ever get better because I hate how slow it is. If you don't like how slow it is there's no point continuing I'm afraid to say because the pace never really picks up you always have that slow start especially with the fits books which is the majority of the realm of the adlings also if you do decide to pick up these books this is the series that my book club has just covered so we do have a live show for every single book in the realm of the adlings and i will link the adling along playlist down in my description box they will always be there for you so if you want to know like our thoughts catch up book club thoughts on the books as you go along you do have access to those live shows to watch after you've read each of the books well, that is it from me today guys down in the comments please let me know if you've read the realm of the Eldlings and agree with me or like i said if you have any questions or if you're gonna know pick up the realm of the Eldlings. but aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna if you head to my description box you'll find links to my good reasons from twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as link to my bookish candle website the instagram for that and a 10 off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye
Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go, and nobody knows. With guns hidden under our petticoats, we're never gonna quit it. No, we're never gonna quit it. No.